Howdy folks, Dave here at Thunder Mesa Studio on this Workbench Wednesday. I hope you are having a great day wherever you are and whenever you happen to be watching this. Today I want to talk about tools. I am often asked about the tools that I use in my various builds and projects. So today I want to really count down the top 10 most essential hand tools that I use for model making. Hand tools, that's right. Now we're talking about power tools today. That's a whole different video. These are the 10 most essential tools. At least they're the most essential tools to me. The ones that I go back to and use over and over and over again on almost every single project. Now, if you're an experienced modeler, most of the tools on this list are going to be old hat to you. But if you're new to the hobby or new to model making, new to making in general, uh, I hope you find this to be very useful for getting a start on the toolkit that you need to make better models. Most of these things are going to be readily available through uh, Amazon or Micromark or other uh, online retailers or at your local hobby shop if you're lucky enough to have one of those. I will put the links uh, down below to uh, just about everything I can find so you can check them out for yourself. Now the importance of these tools is actually in no particular order. I mean they are essential so you really kind of need all of them, at least I think so. Uh, but since the YouTube algorithm loves a top 10 list, we're going to start with 10 and work our way down to number one. So without any further ado, here are the top 10 most essential model making tools in my opinion. Number 10, scale rulers. Whatever scale you model in the most, it's a really good idea to have a scale ruler on hand so you can convert inches or millimeters and centimeters if you're doing metric into whatever their scale equivalent is. And you can pick these up from different manufacturers and retailers. This is a 187th scale ruler for HO scale. I've got a 1/160th scale ruler here for uh, N scale. And then I've got just a standard imperial unit uh, metal ruler. And this is my favorite one. I model in O scale most of the time, 148th. So I can just use a regular imperial unit uh, ruler for that because a quarter inch equals a foot. It's really easy to do the math. An eighth of an inch is six inches, a sixteenth is three inches, and so on. So it's it's real easy to figure out. I prefer a metal straight edge like this because it comes in really handy for when you need to cut things and shape things, not just measure things. So that's number 10, a scale ruler. Number nine, flush cut nippers. That's what these little guys are. They are pliers or wire cutters that are going to cut right flush with the edge of something. This side is flat and this side is beveled in for the cutting edge. And in this age of uh, 3D printed parts, these things are really, really handy for getting 3D printed parts off of the sprues. They do make specific pliers for that also, but I find that the flush cut nippers are great for a lot of different things. This is a more heavy duty pair, and uh, this one is specifically made for cutting through rail. You can cut up through to uh, up to uh, code 100 rail with these. These are made by Zuron. Great, great thing to have in your toolbox, and I consider them essential. Number eight is a good pair of needle nose pliers. I actually have a couple of different pairs in my toolbox, and this one has a longer needle nose, which is handy for getting into hard to reach areas. It also has cutting jaws, though they are not flush cutters like those nippers are, but you can cut wire and things like that with them. And you know, I, I don't know how many times a day I reach for a pair of needle nose pliers, sometimes just to hold on to something while I'm, you know, fiddling with it over here, sometimes to retrieve a small part, uh, to bend wire, you know, a thousand and one uses. It's just a great general purpose tool that everyone should have in their model making toolkit. Get yourself a good pair, pair too. Don't, um, don't skimp on those. Number seven, small clamps. I am always asked about these small soft jaw clamps that you see in a lot of my build videos. And I believe these are from Micromark. They're very, very handy, just little spring jaw clamps. But they are not my favorite clamps to use. My favorite clamps are actually these. 
clothespins. Cheapo wooden clothespins that you can pick up, you know, for next to nothing. Get a bag of a hundred of them and you will never ever run out of clamps. I use these all the time. Um, you can modify them. You can cut these ends shorter to fit into tight spaces. You can take them apart and flip the tines backwards to make more of a needle nose shape. So you're using the handle part as the clamp. Really handy for painting small pieces. Anyway, as any good model maker can tell you, you can never have too many clamps. So a good set of clamps is essential. Number six, scissors. You know, do I really have to explain why you need scissors? <laughs> Very handy tools to have. I prefer to have uh, a set of large and small scissors. Big ones for big jobs, small ones for small jobs. I use these in uh, roofing all the time, uh, cutting shingles and, and small bits of thread. You know, they're for cutting. My only piece of advice when it comes to scissors is uh, try to find ones as much as possible where this hinge pin right here is metal going into metal. Uh, if you get ones that are metal going into plastic or plastic, they're going to break. They're, they're not going to last. Again, you know, always buy the <laughs> best tools that you can afford. Don't skimp on things like scissors. Uh, you'll thank me later. Number five is a good set of small files. This is a set of uh, what's called Swiss pattern needle files that I've had for longer than I can remember. I've had them so long that I lost the handles a long time ago, the handle that they would fit in, but I found that I never need it. Um, you know, you're going to, you're going to be constantly filing and shaping wood and metal and plastic. doesn't matter what material work in, you know, making as has often been said is taking a large thing and making it into a smaller thing. <laughs> so <laughs> files are great for that. You need to have a good set of files. And if you can't afford the full set, there's a couple that you absolutely should have to have. Um, a flat file like this. This boy, this thing's dirty. I might need to replace this one. It seems <laughs> this one's got a lot of mileage on it. The great thing about this flat file is that um, it has a different uh, uh, different surface on each side. So one side is going to file down uh, smoother than the other, rougher on the other side. The other great thing is it has uh, file teeth on one edge like this but it's smooth on the other edge. So if you want to file something down, but don't want to file it you know, this way, then you put that smooth edge up against it. So these are great. Uh, so you, you definitely need a flat file like this. And the other one you need is a round rat tail file. And that's to get in small holes and make them bigger. So these are the two you absolutely have to have. These are the two that are essential. Go ahead and get the whole set, uh, though, if, if you want to. Um, but honestly, there's probably a couple in here that I've never used or only used once or twice. These are the two that I use all the time. So, set of small files. Number four is a pin vise and a set of micro drill bits. Um, a pin vise is great for all kinds of things. You can actually put a pin in there, so it's great for you can use it as an awl. Um, this part turns back here, so you can hold it steady, like with a thumb, and twist it like this. The set of micro drill bits should go from about a size 80 to a 61, like this set does. Uh, and with these drill bits, the uh, the lower the number, the larger the size bit. So 80s are really, really tiny and 61s are, you know, bigger. Anyway, <laughs> you definitely want a set of those. By the way, these drill bits don't last forever. This is probably my um, fifth set of drill bits, if I'm guessing correctly. Um, yeah, they break, they wear out, you lose them in the rug. So you got to replace them from time to time, but these are absolutely essential. You're going to be drilling lots of little holes uh, if you build craftsman style kits, and it doesn't matter if it's wood or styrene or aluminum or whatever, brass, you're, you're going to want a good set of 
drill bits and a nice um, pin vise or two. I've got about three of these. Number three is a good set of tweezers. And if you can only buy one, you can only buy one pair of tweezers. Uh, I recommend these. These are, uh, you know, medical grade, surgical grade steel. The uh, tines down here are bent at a 45 degree angle. You can get them at 90 degrees, 40 or straight out. Um, nice positive grab. You know, if you can only get one, get these. I have several different pair. Uh, I've got some smaller ones like this. This is my favorite uh, because you can get into a lot of places with this angled, you know, either this way or this way. If it doesn't fit this way, you can turn it around the other way and you'll get in there. Very, very handy to have. You're going to need those for small parts. And again, I would caution you against buying cheap ones. Just as a, for instance, just as an example, this is a cheap pair. You can see the difference in the quality here of the steel. These are actually, you can... <laughs> so these are junk. Uh, beware of junk tools. That's all I got to say about that. Um, buy the best ones you can afford. If you can only afford one pair, get some of these. Absolutely essential. These are going in the trash now. Number two a fine tooth razor saw and a miter box to go with it. This is actually, you know, two different tools, but um, I use them constantly together. So I'm going to talk about them all as one I'm going to cheat a little bit. This has become my favorite razor saw to use. It has replaceable blades, which look very much like straight razor blades, old safety razor blades. And uh, I always buy a couple of extra packages of blades to have them on hand because they do wear out and they do break. And then you can get this little mini aluminum miter box, uh, which cuts angles at uh, 90, 45, and 30 degrees. And it has a little stop in here with a screw, a set screw, so you can cut multiple pieces to the same length. Um, the saw is fantastic, great little tool. I use it daily. It's great for wood. It's great for styrene plastic. Um, but the thing is, it will also cut through aluminum and brass. And this is aluminum. So what happens over time is these slots in the miter box, if you use them a lot, they get wallowed out. And you're going to have to replace the miter box eventually. When you get to the point where it's no longer making straight uh, 90 degree angle cuts, then that means it's time for a new miter box, but you know, they're, they're relatively inexpensive. So no biggie there. Uh, great little tool. This will cut stock up to uh, a quarter inch square, which is about as big as I ever go. So I find that a really, really handy. You might even say essential tool to have on the workbench. Number one, it's a good quality hobby knife. And 99% of the time, you're going to want a number 11 blade in there. In fact, I buy these in bulk, uh, usually about 100 of them at a time, and keep them on hand so I never run out. The tips break off, usually within the first couple of uses. <laughs> Maybe I'm a little hard on them, I don't know. But yeah, you want to get a, a good quality one. Um, and by the way, don't necessarily be uh, taken in by brand names if you know what I mean. Uh, there's a brand name out there that I'm not going to name that has been in the knife business for generations. They don't necessarily make the best quality hobby knives anymore. Um, what you want is one. Yeah, I'm going to pull the blade out of here real quick. You want one just like your uh, pin vise with a four jaw collet. Okay. You do not want one with a two jaw collet and the cheaper ones you can get out there at your local stationary store and places like that often have a two jaw collet. And, um, I'll show you exactly what happens when you have one of those. This is a brand name knife with a two jaw collet. It's tightened as tight here. I'll tighten it as tight as I can get it. 
<laughs> it just doesn't work very well. So you want one with a four jaw collet because you don't want that knife, you don't want that sharp blade going anywhere uh, while you're while you're using the knife. You want it to be held securely in there at all times. So again, I, I, I sound like a broken record with this, but buy the best one that you can afford, get uh, plenty of extra blades, and make sure you dispose of the old blades properly. You should have a jar or something marked for sharps, uh, all your old razor blades, saw blades, things like that, that are no longer useful. You put those in there, you seal that jar, and then you throw that jar away. Oftentimes I will even wrap the blades with a little piece of tape because uh, I don't want anybody reaching into the trash can and cutting themselves. Anyone who deals with our garbage, uh, you need to be respectful of those people. So, yeah, dispose of them properly by the best you can get. This is a tool that I use every single day. Number one, I mean, they're all essential, but this one's number one. This one's more essential. <laughs> and here they are all together my 10 essential model making tools, uh, give or take. You've got your uh, scale rulers, flush cut nippers, needle nose pliers, some clamps, scissors, small files, tweezers, good set of micro drill bits and a pin vise, a uh, razor saw and a miter box, and a good quality hobby knife. If you can gather all of these things together, you're, you are well on your way to a, a good model maker's toolkit. They may notice that I didn't say that those are the only tools you'll ever need. It's just a really good start. I'm sure many of you out there have several tools that I didn't mention. And if you do, put them in the comments down below and I may do a future video on 10 more essential model making tools. But until then, I want to thank you all for watching today. Please like, subscribe, share, and hit that notification bell to see more from Thunder Mesa Studio. You can also follow us over on Instagram at thunder.mesa and see everything that's new on the Thunder Mesa Studio website at thundermesa.studio. And if you really enjoy what we're doing on the channel and would like to show your support, please go over to patreon.com slash thundermesa like these great folks did and show your support there. Until next time, keep moving forward everyone. Adios for now.